Good afternoon, and welcome to Understanding the PPP Flexibility Act Changes. My name is Dana O'Donnell, Director of Marketing with Schaeferman Lakin. Attorney Scott Borsak, who is a partner and chair of the Schaeferman Lakin Business Department, will be presenting today's program. Before we get started, I want to let everyone know that today's webinar is being recorded and will be emailed to you within 24 hours. It will also be available on our website, Schaeferman.com. Should you want a copy of the presentation slides, you can download from the handouts tab. Scott will also be taking questions at the end of the presentation, so please submit your question on the questions tab and we will try to get to as many as possible. Let's get started. Scott? Thanks, Dana, and good afternoon, everyone. Little did we know that when we planned this program following the signing of the PP Flexibility Act, that we would literally hours before we went on the air have more uh, guidance from the SBA. So today is kind of a, a twofer. We get um, to talk about the new legislation and the beginnings of guidance from the SBA on that legislation. Um, there's still a lot that remains to be provided by the SBA here. So there's obviously going to be further programs we're going to have to do because there's a lot about the Flexibility Act that um, impacts the decisions that borrowers have to make um, from now until the time they submit their application for forgiveness. So with that introduction, let's get started. So the Flexibility Act passed rather quickly from House adoption to signature by the president barely eight days passed. In passing the Flexibility Act, Congress made um, the changes in the act effective as if they were included in the uh, Paycheck Protection Program as initially passed. I think you'll see as we go through this program that there's probably more questions created by the Flexibility Act and more answers that have to be provided before borrowers uh, can really make decisions about what they're gonna do with the provisions in the Flexibility Act. From my review, it seems pretty clear that several basic points were missed here. And in some ways, the situation for borrowers has been made worse and not better. And I'm mindful that borrowers generally were asking for more time to spend the money. I think borrowers were asking for more time to spend in a way that they could get forgiveness. The Flexibility Act didn't provide the flexibility on forgiveness that borrowers were hoping. And the SBA took, I think, the most restrictive view of what the Flexibility Act stands for. But we're gonna see that as we go into uh, the guidance that SBA issued um, sometime close to midnight uh, last night. I, I didn't see the guidance until very early this morning and I was uh, working late last night and it still hadn't been posted. So um, it is still fairly fresh. So a summary of what we have in the Flexibility Act, there were timing changes that were made. There's a new employee availability exemptions from the full-time equivalent test. And interestingly enough, it's just the full-time equivalence test. There isn't a uh, similar exception for salary reduction. Spending percentages have changed, the relationship between non-payroll and payroll expenses. Borrowers have an election to use the original eight week covered period. This creates a whole lot of other questions in light of the guidance the SBA issued, and we'll talk about that in a little while. Uh, the loan repayment period can now be five years, and uh, any borrower who has a loan outstanding uh, now would have to ask the bar their lender to get that, the five years applies to any new loans. Uh, there is an extension of uh, the payment deferral period. Right now that period is six months. Uh, there is now a due date for the forgiveness application. And I'd suggest that although we have all these things provided in the Flexibility Act, it's tough to 
make intelligent decisions without more guidance. Some of that guidance came um, last night, as I've suggested, but there's plenty more that remains to be provided here before um, we can make decisions and provide solid advice. So as the timing changes, the act says that uh, new loans are to be repaid over five years instead of two. The covered period in section 1102, which is the section that gives borrowers the, the opportunity to make a loan application in the first place and to spend money generally, uh, was extended from June 30, 2020 to December 31st of 2020. The act also says that the covered period in section 1106 um, for the period of forgiveness of spending is the earlier of 24 weeks from loan origination or December 31st. I assure you the act says that specifically. I put a question mark there because the SBA seems to disagree and we'll get into that in a moment or two. The mulligan deadline, the period of time that borrowers have uh, to correct FTE shortages and salary reduction um, is December 31st. So as I've been talking about, the SBA comes in with some late night guidance um, last night and they tackle several things. The first thing the SBA tells us is that the Flexibility Act, Section 3B, sets a covered period um, in Section 1106 of the CARES Act, which is the forgiveness provision, to the earlier of 24 weeks from origination or December 31st. So Section 3B extends this covered period to 24 weeks. Now, as I said on the forgiveness application program on Tuesday, that in and of itself created a bunch of questions um, that the SBA apparently tried to wrestle with in this guidance. The SBA says that um, Section 3A of the Flexibility Act that provides for definition of covered period only applies to section 1102, the loan and spending provision, not the forgiveness provision. Essentially what they're saying is that Congress didn't intend to say what it said in 3B when it created or extended the eight week covered period for loan forgiveness to 24 weeks. Not sure how they draw that conclusion. What the SBA is saying in their guidance is that the eight week spending period for forgiveness in 1106 is unaltered. It's still eight weeks following the origination of the loan. The FTE and salary reduction testing periods in 1106 remain unaltered uh, because those had no reference to. Um, to any other date other than the covered period. So the effect here is that the SBA has said that the definition of covered period in the section that allows you to spend for forgiveness and test FTE and salary reduction are all still eight weeks, eight weeks from the origination of the loan, and they've basically said that 3B of the Flexibility Act doesn't exist. Congress couldn't possibly have meant what it said by using those words. Now, there's some suggestion later on in the guidance that maybe SBA doesn't even believe this because they go back and forth using terms. I think we'll probably hear from the SBA further on this. But when we talk about the election to use the eight week covered period, you know, we can talk a little bit about if Congress intended to do this, there would be no reason to provide an election to literally do the very same thing. We have a new employee availability exemption. 
So if you lose full-time equivalents um, in the covered period, they're going to be exempt from consideration. That is, we're not going to be penalized for the loss of these employees if you can't rehire the ones who you had employed on February 15th, and you can't rehire similarly qualified employees all by December 31st. So if you want to apply this FTE exemption and you've lost employees, you have to make efforts to find suitable replacements or bring these people back um, up until December 31st, the end of the year. So if you want to use this exemption, you're not going to be able to file your application for forgiveness until next year because you have to keep working to hire these people. Now, if you can get them back and you satisfy your FTE issue outside of the covered period, at that point, you can file your application um, because you've corrected your FTE issue. But if you're looking to qualify for this exemption, you're gonna have to keep working to hire these individuals through the end of the year. There's another exemption from the FTE test um, and that is, if you are unable to return to pre-pandemic level of business activity due to compliance with government restrictions for sanitation, worker safety, or social distancing, again, you're going to exclude, um, you're not going to be bound by the FTE test. Now, with a lot of states reopening, uh, it's going to be interesting to see whether this um, exception for restrictions on worker safety, social distancing, and sanitation are going to have application for very much longer. The Flexibility Act says that in order to take advantage of this exception, this exemption, you have to establish the elements in good faith. They don't provide any description on what you need to do, how you go about demonstrating all of this in good faith. And as I pointed out, there's nothing in the Flexibility Act that creates an exemption from the salary reduction test. So if you fall into these baskets, you're excused from the FTE test, but you're not excused from the salary reduction test. I'm not sure how that's going to work. Spending percentages. If you remember in the first go-round, when PPE was first released, the SBA did us all a favor and read into the act the requirement that um, at least 75% of the proceeds have to be spent on payroll expenses. And there was some suggestion that that was a, a cliff or threshold to uh, forgiveness. If you didn't meet the, the threshold, then um, you couldn't get forgiveness at all. So in the Flexibility Act, what Congress did is provide that borrowers can now spend up to 40% of loan proceeds on non-payroll costs. So that's obviously better than what SBA was giving us before, which was 25%. So the Flexibility Act requires 60% of the loan be spent on payroll expenses. So we read that far and said, okay, Congress is now taking SBA's suggestion uh, making it more favorable to the borrower, going to 60% payroll, 40% non-payroll. But the Flexibility Act said, it's not 60% of the spend, but it's 60% of the loan, which again, new concept. Well, then, um, the, and the Flexibility Act was uh, quite specific that, this percentage was an absolute amount that we had to spend to receive loan forgiveness. If you don't spend it, if you didn't hit 60% of the loan amount in payroll costs, you were getting no forgiveness at all, which was different than what was ultimately determined to be the interpretation of the SBA 75% rule, which was um, looking only at the amount actually spent, not the amount of the loan. Last night's guidance, like the point we talked about before about the Section 3B of the Flexibility Act, SBA said, well, here too, Congress didn't mean what it said. 
SBA and Treasury are interpreting this provision of the Flexibility Act to require proportionate forgiveness, going back to um, the ultimate interpretation of their last modification here. What they're saying in guidance is that a borrower can get forgiveness uh, if 40% of their total spend is on non-payroll costs, no more than 40% of the total spend is on non-payroll costs. So that would, by default, give you 60% on um, payroll. But the SBA is not keying it toward the amounts uh, which are loaned. They're keying it to the amount of the expenditure. So again, this is very different than what's in the Flexibility Act. This is the place where I think the SBA gets hoisted on its own petard. The Flexibility Act has an election to allow a borrower to elect to use the original eight week covered period, the eight weeks that begin when the loan originated. It's tremendously curious. I presume that the reason Congress provided that election was so that a borrower can avoid a number of questions surrounding this 24 week period and opt for the certainty of the eight week covered period. Now, since the forgiveness application is not due for 10 months after the end of the covered period, and we'll talk about the due date in a little while, there really is no need to, to rush here. You've got plenty of time to make this consideration. But you know, I leave you with this question on this point. If the SBA is correct that what Congress intended was to leave the eight week covered period unaltered, there'd be no reason to provide an election to use the eight week covered period. Congress clearly intended something different that they hadn't completely fleshed out. And what the SBA has done in guidance is blue penciled the Flexibility Act, removing any ability for, for, for further revision dealing with the new 24 week covered period. And what the SBA has said is, you have just eight weeks to spend to get forgiveness. Now that does leave another 16 weeks, and what a borrower is going to do with those 16 weeks. That all gets back to points that I've been making um, since we started this odyssey, which was, as originally intended, Congress thought that there would be a period of time after the eight week period where borrowers could use the money, use it on eligible expenses, payroll, utilities, um, rent, and mortgage interest, but not get forgiveness because they spent it after the eight week covered period. By expanding the period of 24 weeks, there is now a longer period of time where borrowers can spend money I think still on eligible expenses, uh, but not get forgiveness. And that seems to be the direction that the SBA is, is pushing us all into here. Uh, changes were made to the loan repayment period. Loans originated after the Flexibility and Act is enacted have a minimum repayment period of five years. You know the current repayment period is two with uh, six months grace. The SBA has begun advising uh, the media that it has the ability to issue additional approvals and some banks do have money to lend uh, to new applicants only. Uh, the, the PPP prevents an existing borrower with a pending application from making a second. So if you know anybody who hasn't gotten in, this may be a good time uh, for them to make an application. The authority to make loans or actually to provide approvals expires on June 30. So counting today, there's only 19 days left to make an application for someone who hasn't applied yet. As to most of you who are listening here, uh, who uh, are making application, who are, have already made applications and have loans, uh, in order to get the benefit of five years, you have to ask your lender. <laughs> 
and your lender has to agree to exp uh, extend the repayment term to five years. The act does not compel lenders to automatically extend all to five years. So this is gonna be a, a lender by lender issue. And it's gonna be interesting to see what the individual lenders do and um, whether uh, they permit it and how many of them uh, do permit it. Let's talk a little bit about the change in the loan payment deferral period. As originally enacted, the first payment of a PPP loan was not due until six months after origination. So you had basically two months to spend the money. The bank had two months to make a determination on your application, um, which gave you roughly two months to get um, your application for forgiveness together. Well, that's changed. That's interesting. That's changed under the, under the act, under the Flexibility Act. The first payment now isn't due for 10 months after the end of the covered period. And that's only assuming if there's no application for forgiveness that's been submitted. The covered period is now the earlier of 24 weeks from origination of the loan or December 31st. So, if you make an application for forgiveness um, at the end of the covered period, 24 months out from origination, uh, you're not gonna be making a payment for at least 10 months uh, following the end of the covered period, which obviously now is a lot longer than the six months that we had before. There's also a suggestion in the Flexibility Act that we finally have a due date for the application for forgiveness. If you don't file an application, the first payment is due 10 months after the covered period, as we just talked about. If an application is submitted, the first payment isn't due until after the forgiveness amount is determined and the SBA pays the amount of the forgiveness to the bank that made the loan in the first place. Now, some of the banks are having their loans repurchased before the covered period even ends. So if we're submitting an application, there's not gonna be a payment due until after the amount of potential forgiveness is determined by the SBA, I'm sorry, by the lender. And the earliest that can happen is after you've submitted your application plus another two months. So that's practically a year, whereas before we had six months, and it could be longer than that. So strong suggestion here is that we basically have 10 months from the end of the covered period to submit the application to extend the forgiveness even further while the, SP, while the lender is considering the amount requested for forgiveness. The SBA has got to do some work here. We need some more information. The exemption provision from the FTE uh, test tells us that to qualify, uh, we have to demonstrate an inability to rehire, and we have to continue those efforts through December 31st. So as I pointed out earlier, you can't apply for forgiveness until the end of the year unless you hire back enough people to negate the um, adverse consequences of failing the FTE test because you have to continue to make the efforts through the course of the year. You're gonna have to document the efforts that you make to hire suitable employees. So how are we gonna do that? Are we gonna use employment agencies? Are we gonna post ads on, um, on monster.com and the various uh, other platforms for help wanted. And these are gonna to have to be legitimate efforts. You can't do this half-heartedly, uh, particularly if you've got a number of FTEs that you're seeking uh, the exemption for. The other uh, inquiry for the FTE test, separate uh, exception, is for the inability to return to the business level that existed on February 15th before the pandemic. Well, what does same level mean? 
if I get my business to 90% of the revenue, is that the same level? How close do I have to get before the SBA can say you're at the same level? You know, is are, are they going to say that I need to have 30% uh, less activity? Or is it literally any meaningful reduction off of the prior activity is going to be enough? This certainly is one area that I think the SBA is going to provide us with more guidance. And as I pointed out a couple of times, um, salary reduction test isn't subject to this exemption, at least not at this moment. We'll have to continue to watch to see if the SBA provides additional guidance and, and grants that somehow. I don't think everything is, is well here. I think there's a lot of, of issues to, to deal with. The SBA suggests that 1106 covered period is not altered by the Flexibility Act. Testing periods for FTE and salary reduction are still eight weeks after loan origination. So this additional time after the eight week period looks like a period where you can spend the proceeds on eligible expenses. You can't go out and buy yourself a boat, for example. Um, you have to spend it on, on the eligible expenses, payroll, um, mortgage interest, rent and utilities charges, and if you spend outside of the, the eight-week period, um, you're going to have to repay those amounts either two years or, or five years. As the SBA is presently providing guidance, only those who actually spend within the eight weeks that start when the loan originates are going to get forgiveness. Um, but I think those 16 weeks after the covered period ends, allows for spending, you just have to pay it, uh, pay it back. And remember, you know, it's the earlier of 24 weeks or December 31st. The SBA must have in its mind that there's going to be several borrowers whose loans are going to originate after, Dece uh, after June 30, so that December 31st is going to provide the, the outside here. I know that there are a lot of borrowers whose loans originated um, early in April. And a lot of them uh, were looking at a covered period that is ending this week or early next week. And we're making some tough decisions on whether and how to spend money. Now with this guidance and the Flexibility Act coming out, the choice for a lot of borrowers is going to be do I spend the money and have it forgiven, or do I keep my powder dry, hold this money, and use it for when I reopen, knowing full well that I have to repay it? I think this is going to be a business-by-business business decision based upon the expenses um, that you expect to face when you uh, reopen. It's, it's not an easy choice. SBA initial guidance of 75% spending requirement on payroll expenses, I've already pointed out, was not supported by the act. Um, one could have interpreted the language uh, to require the spend before you got any forgiveness. And the SBA subsequently interpreted that to be proportionate. The Flexibility Act, as I pointed out, um, changes the ratios, 60% on payroll, 40% on, on non-payroll, and the SBA continues to say that um, proportionate forgiveness was intended. Uh, owner employees. Early on in this process, SBA provided some guidance, first that sole proprietors, and then just recently, anyone who fit the label of owner employee could receive no more than 850 seconds of 2019 net income as compensation from a PPP loan. The rationale here was that the covered period uh, for forgiveness was eight weeks, so they could only receive eight weeks of compensation. If the spending period for forgiveness is what the SBA is saying it is now, 
uh, still eight weeks, then maybe the owner fraction, 850 seconds, isn't going to be altered. If you literally read the Flexibility Act, you could make an argument that that period could have been 24 weeks. So does that fraction change to 24 over 52? But the SBA kind of dodged that by saying that the covered period for forgiveness, notwithstanding the Flexibility Act, is still only eight weeks. Uh, but the guidance that we got last night was really only the first response. There's still plenty of work for the SBA to, to do here. They have to change the application for forgiveness because there are several inconsistencies, as I pointed out uh, in our last program, and they have to make accommodation for the Flexibility Act. So that application, again, as I pointed out on Tuesday, is going to have to change. Um, the guidance all strongly suggests that the loan forgiveness spending period remain, remains at eight weeks, and I think the SBA is going to have to continue to discuss this point and how it is they have essentially, by regulation, changed the explicit language in a statute. It may be that Congress comes up with a technical correction to correct their, their, their own legislation. Um, as I've suggested more than once, the borrowers who spent money to get forgiveness but who weren't operating benefited their employees by making that spending, but many of them could have held those funds uh, using them at another time. They wouldn't have gotten forgiveness, but um, they may have improved their cash position. So as we pointed out, I think there's still a lot more guidance that needs to come from the, the SBA here. And, you know, every time the SBA picks up their pen, it seems like they solve one problem and they create another. It kind of reminds me of, of a game of whack-a-mole. You know, we identify one issue, knock that mole back into the hole, that creates another question. SBA pops up with another mole from another hole. This continues to be tremendously difficult for borrowers to navigate. The journey is just beginning, I'm afraid. With the changes in legislation um, and regulatory interpretation wholly inconsistent with the plain meaning of legislation, we're all here waiting with bated breath for the next bit of guidance that comes from the SBA. As many of you have done, uh, you've registered for these webinars and we've shared with you um, our view as soon as information has been available. We will continue to, to do this. But we're gonna run another webinar uh, later this month on new questions and answers. And we take a lot of that from the questions that we get, whether it's by email or questions that you pose in uh, the course of these uh, programs. So I'm hoping Dana at this point has gotten one or two good questions for me to, to try to answer. And I'll turn this over to her to, to raise those. Sure. Um, if we extend past our original eight weeks, will we be required to maintain the exact headcount? Or do we have the op option to then reduce staff at all? Well, if the SBA means what it says, you're only going to be required to maintain staffing through the original eight week covered period. Now, the staffing levels and their compensation are critical to getting forgiveness for the amounts you spend during the eight week covered period. If you don't spend all of the loan proceeds during the first eight weeks, you still have another 16 weeks in which to spend money, but you're not gonna get forgiveness on what you spend in the 16 weeks following the covered period. Should we be making any interest payments on the PPP loans yet if we have not gone through the first eight weeks of our money? 
No, there's there's no need to make a, an interest payment. Um, principal or interest aren't due until the first payment date. Um, I don't even think interest is going to accrue until uh, a year after the covered period. One employee on our staff needs to be paid additional money to be brought up to 75% of salary. Can this be done in a special payroll check and we could then close out our eight week period? Absolutely. No problem with doing that. Uh, next one is, if an employee or owner hits the $15,385 limit, are the employer's contributions to 401k and healthcare premiums forgivable? Yes. The employer contributions to health care and retirement benefits, as well as the employer obligations to pay state and local employment taxes, are not subject to the 15385 limit. There is no limit on those expenses. But we're only talking about the employer's responsibility as to those charges. The next one is, can the covered period be extended beyond eight weeks until the funds are used, but not out to 24 weeks? No, no. And what the SBA is suggesting here is that there, and this is kind of in line with what I've been suggesting, there is a covered period for loan forgiveness, which is eight weeks. And this 24 week period that includes the eight week loan forgiveness period, um, in, in that larger period outside the eight weeks, you can still spend on eligible expenses, but that spend has to be repaid. The only period you get forgiveness for is the eight week covered period uh, following origination and there is no extending that period. There's no option to do that. And we don't get to choose which eight weeks um, we're operating under. The problem for a lot of borrowers is not long after their loan originated, they weren't able to open and they didn't spend any of the money. And what some borrowers were hoping was they would be able to get forgiveness on their spending once they've reopened. When Congress passed the Flexibility Act and said that the, the spending forgiveness period was 24 weeks, that of course made no sense because the amount of the loans were just for 10 weeks worth of wages. If you had to uh, uh, spend for 24 weeks to get forgiveness and maintain your headcount for 24 weeks to get forgiveness, you certainly couldn't do that with 10 weeks. So. My thought was that what either Congress or the SBA was going to do was allow borrowers to pick an eight or 10 week period inside the 24 weeks, and that would be the period they would get forgiveness for. Instead of going that route, what the SBA said is there's no change in the covered period for uh, spending forgiveness. That started when the loan originated, and it ends eight weeks later. All we've done is created a period, a longer period, for borrowers to go and spend money and have to repay those funds. And all they can spend it on is eligible expenses. For people earning over $100,000 per year, how much will be covered under the uh, PPP forgiveness? Is it $15,384 or more? $15,385 rounded to the nearest dollar. That's on their compensation. The employer costs issues um, for health insurance, retirement, and employee, the um, employer portion of, of state employment tax um, has no limit. So for that employee, the total cost is obviously going to be higher than the compensation. If your loan originated before the Flexibility Act passed, are you still entitled to the changes? Yes, 
the uh, effective date of the statute uh, states that the pay paycheck protection program program will be read as if the flexibility act changes were in the original act so it all relates back to the effective date of the act as passed our loan covers 10 weeks can we obtain forgiveness on all 10 weeks or will it only be for eight weeks well for payroll costs it seems pretty clear that it's eight weeks there are several examples that for non-payroll expenses, you can extend beyond eight weeks uh, based on the, the payment cycle of utility and, and rent bills. Uh, there was an example that I had talked about on, on Tuesday where a loan originated on June 1, uh, which would have had a covered period then of eight weeks that ran to July 26. In that example, the borrower had paid utility charges on June 2nd, uh, July 2nd, and August 2nd. But clearly the June 2nd period uh, bill related to a period before loan origination. What the SBA said in guidance as to that example was that the borrower would get forgiveness on the June 2nd payment, on the July 2nd payment, and then roughly 24 days of the August 2nd payment. So in effect, this borrower got um, like 84 days of um, utility expenses eligible for forgiveness when the covered period was only 56. But that question, uh, that example was specific to non-payroll expenses. Uh, I, don't, I don't believe you're gonna get the same kind of play with payroll expenses. Is it your opinion that the period to spend the funds and to be eligible for forgiveness will stay eight weeks? Our eight weeks expires at the end of next week and we will have funds that have not been spent and have contemplated employee bonuses rather than have the funds turn into a loan? All I can offer you is a guess. My guess is that the SBA will eventually come to realize that the portion of its guidance uh, saying that Congress didn't mean what it said in 3B of the Flexibility Act was wrong. That's my guess. The, the chief reason, I think, to extend the covered period was to give borrowers the opportunity to have a longer time period to spend money and seek forgiveness. All that they've done here is extend the period where borrowers could spend money and pay it back. So for a number of borrowers uh, who probably would spend the money properly, they've really done nothing. And like so much of this act, in providing this guidance, the SBA acted hastily. Now for this particular um, attendee who has a covered period that ends at the end of this week, or the end of next week, you have a difficult decision. And as I tell tax clients all the time, we can only make decisions for the law as it is in front of us by the time we have to call the coin toss. And if at the time that you reach the last day of the covered period, there hasn't been any change in the position of the SBA. You have to assume it's just eight weeks and make your decision based on what's in front of you. If an employee was fired for poor performance, do we need to hire another employee so as to satisfy the FTE test? I think it depends on when they were fired. If they were fired during the covered period, 
um, for poor performance, no, you don't have to hire another employee. What if the entire loan is spent only to cover payroll? Is that the key to be fully forgivable? Well, it certainly makes everything a lot easier. If you spend it only on payroll, uh, you don't get into this whole question of 60, 40, <clears throat> um, or how many weeks. The more you spend on payroll, the better off you generally are. How about one more question, Dana? Sure. If you only use the original eight weeks, can an employer lay off employer employees after 10 weeks and still get forgiveness? Yes. No matter how you slice it, uh, your obligation to maintain um, headcount and salary ends at the end of the covered period. By the SBA saying Congress didn't change the covered period for forgiveness, the FTE testing period ends um, after eight weeks, as does the salary reduction test. It, it would be a little incongruous for Congress to give you um, funds to pay your employees over eight weeks and tell you you had to keep them for 10 weeks or 24 weeks when they didn't provide the resources with which to make those payments. I want to thank everybody for tuning in today. Uh, I, I think this is only the, the first of of many changes that we're gonna see in the, the twists and turns of um, the Flexibility Act. Uh, we know there's a lot more coming uh, down the pike. We continue to send out email blasts to those of you who've attended seminars. And if this is your first, uh, you'll be added to our mailing list. Uh, I continue to be available for borrowers uh, to advise them on their spending patterns, on their forgiveness applications. Uh, we're available for consultations. We're available to, to be retained. And um, as a courtesy, I've tried to answer as many questions as attendees provide by email. I have to say some of you have provided me with emails with six or seven questions, and I've limited responses to one or two. Uh, for those of you who, who have multiple questions, I think a consultation probably works best. So let's continue to pay attention to what's going on out there. Uh, beside dealing with these laws, we're all now dealing with uh, the end of the, the stay-at-home orders and, and businesses are beginning to reopen again. Um, stay safe and reach out if you require assistance. Have a good day, everybody.